Hey guys, we are back with another video today. We are doing something just a little bit different today as in I'm going to show you the steps that I take on my screen. And if that part doesn't interest you, I will timestamp so you can go ahead and skip on by. What we're doing is we're creating a reusable personalized stencil. I'm going to be creating quite a few of these for a craft class that I'm hosting. So I want them to be able to be reused over and over. Now you can't do that with vinyl or stencil vinyl because you lose all the little ends of the letters. So I have watched some other videos, learned and, and tried to figure out how to do it. I'm using something called craft plastic. It is a thin, thin plastic, but is durable enough that it can be reused over and over. And one of the projects that we are doing in our craft class is a garden flag. So that is where we are going to start today with that one. And I'm going to start going over here. We are in Cricut Design Space, of course, and I'm going to start by adding, grabbing just a shape. My garden flag is burlap, so I am going to change the color just to kind of a brown, just for visual purposes. We're not actually going to cut it. Now, my garden flag has a bit of a border around it, so within that border I have about 11 and a half inches to work with. And you do need to use this little unblock, otherwise it will, or excuse me, unlock. Otherwise it will automatically adjust it evenly, proportionately, I should say. Now it is about 16 inches long. Now, in order for us to see this, I'm going to shrink my screen quite a bit there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into images and I've already browsed them. But we're just going to use a design that is already in here. It's this one. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to do add to canvas. And I just did, my search was just welcome to home. So I'll, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, but we are going to make a few changes here before we start creating the stencil. So for now, I'm going to move this. So what I'm going to do is actually hide it. And I want to detach it down here because what I don't want are the hearts. So I'm going to come over here to our layers panel and I'm going to take those hearts out. If you like the hearts, you keep the hearts. I don't want them. I'm also going to change the Williams font. And of course, personalize it to the name that I want it to be. So I'm going to delete that. So then I'm going to come over here to text. And I'm going to type in the last name that I want to use. I think I'm going to do all caps. I'm going to change this and use a, yeah, it's called Times New Roman. So I was kind of playing with this earlier. So that's the font that I'm going to use. I'm going to slide it back in here where it needs to go. It may need to just be a tiny bit smaller. All right, I think this is looking pretty good. Oops. I'm going to click on this, hold shift and click on this and make sure that it is 
centered. Nope, not that. This is also a different color, which is just throwing off my eye slightly. It won't really matter in the end, but. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, the trick with a stencil is that you need to hang on to all these little pieces. Anything closed, basically. Now, when you're using stencil vinyl, it will just cut all of this out, typically, because it's usually it's just kind of a one-time use and you throw it away. No big deal. But where I want to be able to reuse this, I am using a stencil film. I believe it is... 0.7 millimeter in thickness. I will show a picture of it on the screen of what it looks like. I did order it from Amazon. The sheets are 12 by 12. So we are going to end up having to break this up into two because I can't cut the entire length of it on one sheet. So we will cut this little leaf and the welcome to our home and then we'll cut the Powell family with the other leaf on the second page. And I'm not going to waste anything because I'm doing multiples and so I can split this section and do two to a sheet, I'm sure. So in order to connect all these little pieces, it's so simple and I don't know Maybe I'm the only one that hasn't figured all this out already. So you're just gonna grab a little square and make it, I'm gonna unlock it. And we wanna just make it really thin. It doesn't need to be long, it doesn't need to be thick. Just wide enough to hook this to the letter, this space right here. I'm going to duplicate this like a bunch of times because we're going to need a bunch of them. And then I'm just going to start coming up here. I don't know. That might be too thick. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to adjust it just a little bit more. I don't think it needs to be quite that long either. And it won't really matter because what we're going to do is slice them. So when I get this up here with the W, now bear in mind when you are using the slice tool, you can only slice two things. So I can't just line all of these up. I mean, you could line them all up, but then you will have to slice them all individually. And then I'm going to come up here and delete our slice results. And what you are left with, with this, just this little niche, and that will make you be able to hold on to all these little in closed off spaces of your letters so that you can do a proper stencil. Now when you're painting the stencil, of course you can always close that up with just a tiny bit of paint, which you'll see when I demonstrate um, what how I end up painting this. I'm gonna do the project from start to finish because you know, as I said, I am taking this to a craft class, so I want it to work. And in order for me to ensure that it works, I gotta try it out myself. Plus, I, I want a cute garden flag, for sure. It is supposed to be spring here soon. So far, we have not seen any of that. It, in fact, snowed today. So no sign of spring yet. But basically this is all you do. You're just going to go through every little letter that 
is closed. And this one happens to have a lot of them. Because probably partly because of the font and just the lettering itself. It has a lot of loops and on the O we will have to do two on each side. So I'm going to do one here at the top and get that sliced out. And I'm going to do one at the bottom. The M, we don't need to do anything to. There's nothing closed in it. It's already open. At this point, I think you get the idea. So I am going to turn this onto fast speed just to get through it. But I just keep going and keep going and just get all those little notches into each letter that we need. Once you get moving and it just is really a pretty quick process. When I got down to this little A in family, my little block was just too big for it. And I did have to make the screen quite a bit bigger to even see placement for it. Um, but that's really no big deal. I just had to do it a couple of times to get that figured out. And at some point I realized that I forgot to do the H in home. And so I will go back and do that. But right there, I was just attaching and making them into two separate so that they'll cut the way that I want them to. I'm putting the welcome to our home on one and the Powell family on the other. So that's all I was doing there. And now we are ready to cut. Okay, so we got all of those little notches done. Now what we need to do, and I learned this from... Jennifer Maker, I believe is her name. She is on YouTube. I learned a lot of stuff actually from her when I first got my Cricut. She teaches a ton of basics. She's a really good teacher. She is amazing. So if you ever need a tutorial, she's probably got it. She did make something similar to this. She didn't quite go in depth, um, but I did get some ideas from her. So what we have to do is we have to set up the material. Now, as I said, I believe it is the 0 0.7 millimeter plastic craft. Craft plastic. That's the word I'm looking for. So you have to set up your own like setting for it. The Cricut comes with, as you can see, I don't know how many, I would guess a hundred or more of settings in here. But what we want to do is change or add one ourselves. Now you can see I've already done it. Um, as I said, I was practicing. I called it craft plastic right here. And I got these settings from her. They are 350 and it does four passes, meaning it essentially cuts the same thing four times. But to do that, you have to get all the way down to the very bottom and add new material. You're going to give it a title. You can call it whatever you want. Like I said, I called it craft plastic. You're going to save it and add those settings that I showed you. And then you're going to do done. Now, just remember, it needs to be 350 at four passes. 
That's cut pressure of 350. Multi-cut is four times. And the blade type is just your normal blade. And I will put those settings in the description box as well, if that might be helpful. I'm gonna go back. Again, I'm gonna browse all materials. I'm just gonna type in my material because now I have it saved. And you may wanna test yours as well. I will say when I did my test cut, so oops. I, it didn't cut through the first time. So I don't know if maybe I, my, because all machines are not identical, of course. I mean, they're set up to be, you know, the same, but all machines are just a little bit different. And it could be also my blade. Um, but I did notice that I had to, the first time I tried it, I had to, I had to actually put it back in and cut over it. So I unloaded the mat, I looked at it, I could tell it didn't cut all the way through, so I loaded it right back in. So it would be in the same spot, I ran the cut again. The second time I chose this more setting right here, and that really did the trick. Now I didn't want to waste a whole sheet of this stencil material, so I just did a little piece of it for my test cuts. I do recommend test cuts when using a new material that you haven't used before because why? We don't want to waste money for sure, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get it loaded onto my mat and we are going to get this cut out and I'll show you how it looks when we are done. All right, so this is my garden flag. This came in a pack of four, I believe, from Amazon. As I said, this is for a craft class, so I needed more than one. It has the little hole for the metal stand to go in. It is burlap, and here is our stencil that we just cut, and it came out really, really good. I'm, like, impressed. The material isn't real thick, but it's sturdy enough that I think, you know, you could definitely store it and keep it if you, you know, keep it clean. Wash it off when you're done, of course, and I'll just keep it with all the other stencils that I've purchased. I am taping off the top and bottom I end up taping the sides as well because I realize I'm getting a little close there. And I don't want to get my paint where I don't want paint. So I'm just using some masking tape for that. And I am using just regular acrylic black paint and a sponge brush. So nothing fancy here. And I just dab off most of the paint so I don't want a lot on the brush and then I just dab 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 till I cover all the letters I am doing the leaves in a different color so I'm going to leave those and just do the black lettering at this point and you'll see when I lift it up where it does leave little where we cut those notches and if they don't bother you they don't really bother me all that much but I do choose to close them because why not even with having to make the stencil in Cricut cut it and then paint it on this really has been a pretty quick project so I'm pretty pleased with it. I am doing kind of a whole series of like porch decor. 
And this is going to be part of that. One is also a like a porch leaner sign with wood that I'm going to work on and a doormat that will also include a stencil. The doormat one, we will be using a different material though, not probably the 12 by 12 sheets because the doormats are pretty large and I don't want to have to piece a bunch of little things together. But I'm pretty excited. I wanted to take some after pictures of this like in my yard. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that because guess what? Still snowing here. Yep, that's right. It's almost April. We still have snow. Anyhow, who's sick of me whining about the snow? Well, I'm sick of the snow, so there's that. But I ran, I took that out into the kitchen to let it kind of soak in some water really quick. I didn't want the paint to dry on it. And then I get this teeny little brush, kind of a pointy one. And you will never even know those little notches were there. You just go through and put close, close them up. You'll never even know they were there. Also, this drives dries really, really quickly, which is nice. I was worried I was going to, I'm left-handed, so I sometimes run into the trouble of smearing my things when I move on to a next, but this did dry really, really quickly and hardly took any paint at all. I am moving on to the second portion of our stencil. I am attempting to measure and get it lined up correctly. Again, I just type tape that down to keep it still. And I don't know if you noticed, I should have pointed it out. I did have to hold down some of the little loops um, on the welcome to our home part in order to ensure I didn't get any paint underneath it. Just got my fingers a little dirty, but that is not a problem. Paint washes off. I'm starting with the little green leaf here down at the bottom, and then I'm going to work my way up. And I probably will seal this with a spray like matte polyacrylic because it is going to be outside. And we hope to make it last for a little while anyhow. And so I want to protect it as best I can. At this point, we are in the home stretch. I'm just gonna finish up the rest of the black lettering and those two little lines. And this project will be complete. Just peeling off that tape and removing the stencil and looking at the perfection of this fixing up those last few letters. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty proud of myself. This is probably something a lot of y'all have already figured out, been there, done that. But for me, this is a first and I am super pleased with it. Thank you so much for joining me here again today. This was a lot of fun to make. It was really quick and I'm excited to do some outdoor stuff coming up really soon. If I can get some pictures of it outside, I definitely will do that. And we will see you all in the next one. Thanks again. All right, I decided to be brave. I came outside, I stuck it in the ground. It's very wet and soggy and yucky out here. Old leaves, dead plants, but there is signs of spring coming in with our pots and plants. So that's a good sign. Thanks for watching Molly Cool Creations. Click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe and press the bell.
<laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you in the next video. And don't forget to watch every single video we make.